Last time that I was here, I was making a very different video. It would have been a video about making a womb tea. And these tomatoes would have been nice and in bloom and there would have been some tomatoes on them. Some ripe, some not so ripe. Um, now, the tomatoes in a completely different state. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be talking about what I do with the mix, the soil mix that's in these buckets. Because I do not throw away any of my soil mixes. I find a way to repurpose them and use them right back in the garden. Let's talk about how I do that and what you can do to be reusing your soil so that you can save some money and grow some delicious food. Hello everyone, thank you all so so very much for making it for this video. Today we're going to be talking about what I do with my potting mix, the soil mix that I've put in my containers after I have grown stuff inside of them. Now, you have to remember that when you harvest a fruit, that fruit came about because of nutrition that was in the soil. So if you think about it, the nutrition that's in the soil is now being transferred from the soil to the fruit to now your body. That's how you get nutrition. So it's just logical to understand that that soil has now lost something, something that you took from it because you harvested from it. Now that's not a problem because that's how the process is supposed to work. That's the cycle. But we have to always be good towards of the land Meaning that it's not just about taking what we can from the soil, but also giving back. Now, what you might be tempted to do would be to get rid of this soil and get new soil. But this soil still has a value. We just have to find a way to reuse it, repurpose the soil, be able to have it be fruitful again in the garden. But it can't just be used like this. Now, I won't lie to you. There is a possibility that you can take this exact same soil, plant directly inside of it and get a harvest. But I don't think that that's really just put the best way to go about doing it because the soil does get depleted over time. So rather than waiting for it to get super, super depleted, why not every time that you harvest from the soil, put and add stuff back to the soil to make sure that it's in a better position to give you better, more healthier, more nutritious harvest in the future. So let me show you about how I do it, how I fix my soil to get it back ready to be growing again. And... What are some of the things that you could do to save some money while growing some nice, nutritious, healthy food? So one of the first things I'm going to have to do here, because this was tomatoes growing inside here. Tomatoes are vines, so it had to be tied up all different ways. You see a bunch of line over here. So I'm just going to have to get rid of all this line so that I can then get rid of the plants and actually get to the soil underneath. Okay, so all these wires and whatnot is driving me mad. So I'm just going to be pulling out just the buckets. And you know what? I'll deal with this mess after. Like one observation that I'm making already is that the amount of soil that I know I planted the tomatoes in, inside of this bucket, it's probably half at this point here. You see, you lose soil through watering, because some soil escapes through the bottom there, then just natural depletion, and also you have microorganisms just chewing away at your organic matter, so it will all decrease, so that's one of, you know, all of that compounded is why we need to amend our soil. It's crazy, yeah, this was yeah, in tomatoes not two months ago. Now it's just stuff for the compost heap. Now, that being said, you could potentially take all this soil and just put it into your compost heap. Um, that would be considered a brown in your compost heap. If you don't know what a brown or what a green is, you can have a look at the compost guide that I put up um, some months ago. And um, yeah, you could do that with yourself. That's completely fine. But I want to use this soil again, like soon. So I'm going to be amending. Okay, so we're here by the wheelbarrow. The wheelbarrow had some leftover soil. This is like a garden mix. So nothing too crazy inside here. Like this wasn't here for, as part of the video. It's just already here. And it's too much of work to take it out. So I'm just going to let this be incorporated into my, my mixes. I'm going to start off by emptying out all of these inside here. Now inside these buckets, what I had used for my mix with these tomatoes that I grew was a mixture of mini wood compost and animal cow manure, right? So you can see some bits of wood over here, right? I haven't watered it in about two months, so it's just been just there, <laughs> only getting some water whenever the rain fell, which is not the best way to go about it, but to be honest, um, I was... Otherwise um, predisposed or otherwise um, occupied. There we go. Oh, I'm taking out all of these dry leaves. I don't want the dry leaves incorporated into my soil. 
because if I put dry leaves into the soil, then the soil microorganisms are going to be trying to break down the dry leaves and I don't want them to use their valuable energy on that when they should be using that energy for my plants. There you go. Like I can't tell you how much natural worm castings I'm seeing in this because of course I put worm castings into the soil, but because like this is ridiculous. Like if I, let me see if this will focus. I, my hands aren't free, so I don't know if I could get it to focus. Yeah, wow. Like you see like all those greens, that's worm poop. That's from worms just living in the soil because it's so full of organic matter and just pooping. And that is an amazing source of nitrogen. So this soil definitely has some years again to go and if not forever if you keep on amending it amending it properly up there you go there you are now you should be using tools for this kind of thing not just putting your bare hands into it all right so okay so i've put all of the soil that was in those four buckets into this wheelbarrow and so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be going through it, not doing a proper sift, but if I see any big chunks, like any big chunks of roots or anything like um, any kind of bark or whatnot from the wood compost, anything that just be like, for instance, this, all of this, I'm going to take it out because I don't want anything that's too big and chunky inside of my soil mix. But like these leaves as well, as I told you, I don't want the microorganisms having to break this down. So I'll be taking these things out as best as I can. Of course, if you leave a little bit in, it's not the end of the, the entire world, but I just don't want it at the inside of the soil mix itself. All right, so all of these little bits of roots, like to be honest, you can leave this. It does make for nice food for the microorganisms and also home for the microorganisms. So it's not the end of the world, but if there was any big, massive chunks like this big piece of wood here from probably from the wood compost, people trying to short me i would get rid of that all right and now for the amending part i've got here some cow manual it's i got this from a guy in um, freeman road right if you know where that is in st augustine there um the side that's across the highway for the south and um just a random sign i saw some cow manual for sale i paid um let me see i think i paid 30 dollars for a bag um or $35 for a bag, something like that. Um, it wasn't the cheapest, but it also wasn't the most expensive. I mean, a bag like this of actual cow manual because they're farmers and they, um, they have their cows like literally in the back. So this is from the source, right? For a barrel like this, you do not need very much of the cow manual. They said that this was cured. Um, I tested it out on some seedlings and it didn't burn the seedlings. So it seems to be cured enough, but I'm still not putting too very much. The guy was very adamant. He was an older guy. He was very adamant that I don't overuse it. So I said, all right, sir, you got it. All right, so I'm just going to incorporate some of the cow manual inside of here. I'll mix all of this together afterwards. I think I'll put a little bit more cow manual inside of this. Oh. Cow manure is great. I just find it doesn't burn plants as much as other types of manure. And also, it is really good at just improving water retention. Um, I think that carries over to most types of manure, but I just, I've always been a fan of cow manure. Right, so in addition to the cow manure, I also have some additional stuff that really is not super super necessary if you um you're just starting out to be honest don't go and buy these things because you think that you have to get them to start off you've seen this already this is the garden tone from epsoma and or espoma and you can get this in most big agro shops you can just call around and see if they have it this is a good organic fertilizer and it encourages the microbial life inside of your soil so i'm happy to use it Next, I'm putting in some a usual suspect, which is some worm castings. This as well, you can get from most big agro shops. Just call them before asking them to have worm castings. It doesn't have to necessarily be a specific brand. Any worm castings will be better than no worm castings. Wheelbarrow of this amount of soil. 
three handfuls of the worm castings. If it was more full, I would have used probably um, like double hands, you know, three double hands, or at least five to six um, handfuls of it. And the last thing that I'm putting in for now is some azomite, which is rock dust. And this has trace minerals, micronutrition that soils are losing, right? That's why Sadhguru is always talking about save soil. So adding some rock dust like this to your containers goes a long way, especially because it's in containers and you don't always have access to that natural clay minerals that you have in the soil because clay is really, as much as clay, you know, it gets waterlogged and it's not really <clears throat> considered as the best growing mix, especially for containers. It does have a lot of minerals, trace minerals that you're not going to get in a lot of um, soil mixes. Oh my God, just flinging away the soil. And the very last ingredient is purely for mass, just to build up the mass of all of this um, soil is one of these bags of soil that you can get from the vans that pass around selling soil. Normally they have like a, a slang or like a slogan like um, seal, seal, seal. Um, soil for your flower pots, for your kitchen garden, that kind of thing. I know, like I will admit, it's not the absolute best soil, but if you want something that's just for bulk, and you want something that does have some nutrition in it like it's it's not the best but it's absolutely not the worst as well you know like i've grown in this and i've had fair enough harvest and i mean for a hundred dollars you get six of these bags you know so i mean like i don't know who the people are i've never really gotten much in contact with them apart from flagging them now and telling them i want some so but uh, like i'm happy i'm happy to use it and i've used it in the past and i've had Fair enough success. Now, of course, you can get better mixes if you're willing to spend some more money, but it's just always about being as affordable as you can in the garden and finding ways because, I mean, a lot of us are in the garden because the economy makes it so that you can't just always go and buy food the amount that you want and the quality that you want. So we grow it our own. Okay, so I'm just going to mix all of this in. All right, so there you go. That's how I rejuvenate my soil and that's how this soil now, which would have been fairly depleted, is now ready rich and ready to go again and grow some nice delicious nutritious food for me and for my family now one note is that like i don't call it an actual crop rotation but i do tend to like the idea of not growing the same crop in the same soil just time and time again so for instance this had grown tomatoes for me the past few months so what i'll be using this soil for especially because i've already planted out a lot of my tomato seedlings already is i'm going to be using this soil to grow brassicas so i'm going to be using this I think a wheelbarrow like this should get me at least four construction buckets, which is what I like to use for my brassicas. That's my cabbage, my cauliflower, my broccoli. So I'll probably be using, I'll, not probably, I'll be using this soil for my brassicas in the upcoming few weeks when I can get my hand on some seedlings. And that's just my way of crop rotation. So if I had grown brassicas and I'm rejuvenating soil from brassicas, I'll probably use that soil. I'll use it for tomatoes or for peppers. And just kind of keep the cycle of using different soil for different things at different points and I find that that's a good way to help you to avoid some issues with pests or some issues with some bacteria that can form in the soil because of the kind of plants that you grew the time before. There's a lot of science to this but I don't think you should overcomplicate it in your life and in your garden. Just try it out and see what happens and if not you make corrections as you go along. So remember that you can follow us on Instagram, TikTok and on Facebook if you want to see more content coming to Trini Gardeners Garden and if you know somebody who would like to save some money on their potting mix, on their soil mix, Feel free to share this video with them and let's help them to grow more food for themselves and their family. Remember that you can follow us on Instagram, TikTok and on Facebook to see some stuff coming to Trini Gardeners Garden. And remember that you can tag us on any of those platforms because it's such a good thing to see you all in your gardens, just doing your thing and just spending time with yourself, spending time with nature and spending time with your family. Remember as always, this has been the Trini Gardener channel reminding you to get up and get green. Take care.